Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today on advocacy on a budget, uh, which is going to be a collection of, as it turns out, free resources. So hopefully you will find this very, very useful. Today, we'll be hearing from Matt uh, with Green Heron Research Services and Michael from Mob Advocacy, and I am Karen with Bill Track 50. We are going to proceed as if I am a mayor of a town called Smoodleville, and my town is considering, well, no, that's not true. The state is considering legalizing marijuana, and I have to figure out if I want to take a position. So we thought marijuana would be a great topic for our example research. So we are going to be following that storyline through. How am I going to make up my mind if I'm going to support this or oppose this? And, and then what do I do after I make up my mind? All right, so that is the story we're telling. And shh, let's, let's roll. Um, Matt, would you like to introduce yourself? What you do? Sure, Karen. Uh, my name is Matt Kennedy. I am the owner and founder of Green Heron Re Research Services, which we specialize in providing high quality, cost effective results on research projects with short turnaround times. We primarily serve uh, policy government relations professionals, advocacy groups, political candidates, and others interested in the public policy area. Great. Thank you, Matt. Michael, what would you say you do? Sure. Michael O'Brien. I'm the founder and a principal of Mod Advocacy. Uh, we are a nationally scoped state and local government relations firm based in Washington, D.C. Perfect. And I am Karen, the president of Legionation, the makers of Track. So on we go, let's get our presentation started. Um, we start with some research tips, which will be mostly Matt, and we'll move on to some political resources, which will be mostly Michael, and then the Q&A, which hopefully will be you guys. So please do not be shy about asking us questions as we go along. And as Michael pointed out, all of our contact info is at the end as well. Always ask us questions offline. We're happy to help. Okay, so. First, research. I'm the mayor. I need to decide. I need to research marijuana. Health implications, legal implications, rep implications. How am I even going to get started? So, obviously, first place I'm going to go is Google, right? But if I just put marijuana into Google, that's not going to get me what I need. Uh, so, Matt. Wow. Tips. Okay. Start by typing marijuana into Google. Right. One of the things that uh, Google, most uh, estimates vary about a little bit about how often people use Google for their initial search, but most of the time it's between about 75 and 90 percent of the total searches that are done for information on the internet, which is kind of amazing. That is amazing. Google itself does have features and tools which can be used to make you're searching more effective than just typing a term into the Google search box like there, that's there. One example is what is the file type limiter. It will limit your results to a certain type of file, say a PDF or a Word document or an Excel spreadsheet. A lot of the reports that come out from government agencies and research organizations are really posted as PDFs. So if we put in uh, marijuana, uh, I'll type colon PDF here, um, it will start limiting the results that you see. One of the other things that you can do here is you can also sort your results by the date that the Google spider crawled it. So if you want to see more recent items, uh, so we're scrolling down, but if you go back to the top, right under where the, on the toolbar there, under tools, if you click there, you'll see a drop down menu here that's highlighted that will limit the results to anything that's in the past hour, the past 24 hours, the past week, or the past month. I would just click on the past month, and this will show you much more recent things that have come up. Uh, ah, fantastic. Right, because 
yeah, those things could have been from any time, right? But now I've got stuff coming back to me, and these are clearly, as you said, I mean, these are going to be, these are PDFs, so they're reports or some sort of works that give me a little bit more credibility. I'm not reading just anything. And look, this is from August 12th, August 20th. Uh, fantastic. Okay. The, the other thing that uh, you can do with Google, a lot of folks, um, they may have, you know, seen this or heard about it, but they forget about it, is Google also has a site filter, which allows you to search just uh, for a specific website or a series of websites ending in a certain domain ending, such as uh, .org, .com, or .edu. In this right. case, where you want to say, we're looking for marijuana legalization effects. If you type that in, um, and then you type in, um, say we want to look at the National uh, Conference of State Legislators website. If you type in site.colon and then ncsl.org and you search here, um, I would probably expand out here uh, to make it for the past year and you'll see a number of different results. All these are from the National Conference of State Legislators website. Ooh. All right, so I could do NIH.gov if I'm interested in health. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can do that with the health effects there. Um, Beauty. The okay. So that can be a very quick way of getting into some very high quality um, open access resources. You what if I want to see what's come out of universities, but I don't have a particular university in mind? What you could do here is actually instead of, with the, instead of typing in the specific website, is you can type in site.edu. Ah, okay, so I'm gonna go dot edu. Oh, beauty, okay. So this will find uh, things that are, you know, basically uh, mainly university websites, basically any organization that's got an edu, uh, domain ending on the website address will be searched. So okay, but now I've got this one um, from Canada. Yeah, no, that will pop up from Canada. Yeah, okay. So right. you just need to kind of, you know, kind of keep an eye on and what you're looking at. Great, all right, perfect. So um, now I have given myself a wealth uh, official information, good solid stuff that I can count on, um, published by reputable people. So I'm not just reading, you know, uh, whatever old website. Uh, I can look at places I know that do transportation or crime or uh, health and really get myself informed. So I feel like I am on my way as far as Google goes. Mm -hmm. But what happens if now that I've searched for marijuana a bunch of times, Every time I use my computer, obviously, like CBD oil uh, ads are going to be following me around. Right. Well, there's it's an important thing to uh, remember as you kind of um, scoot along here. We'll come back to that slide. We'll talk about this next. Yeah, I was going to say if you you know you're searching for a certain topic, so like if you're the mayor of so you probably don't want ads to the nearest uh, cannabis dispensary showing up in the bar of your uh, screen there. Right. So one of the things you can do, there are search engines which specialize in privacy. Um, DuckDuckGo is probably the best known of the search engines that are out there that do that. And do they still have that time limit so I can still do just the last month? They do. Right. You, have to, um, you have to kind of go under the toolbar on DuckDuckGo, and I forget how what their time limit is set up, but you can sort your results that way with that. Nice. All right. um, there's also Quant, which is another privacy search engine, and there's a link down below here to an article uh, about uh, a number of different alternate search engines that are privacy oriented. Um, I'll mention just there are a lot of other search engines out there that can spe give a more specialized view of search results, which um, 
you know, if you Google that, ironically, you can find some. But one <laughs> example is uh, Million Short, which actually you can sort out the results from a up to a million of the most common websites. And so this can be really useful if you're really searching for an esoteric piece of information or something that may be buried in what's called the far tail end of the internet. Um, and so that's just one example of something that, be, that can be useful. Another thing with the search engines, people really get uh, not exactly brainwashed that Google is the only thing that's out there, but there are other major search engines such as Bing is a good example, which will give you a different set of results for the same search terms that you use for Google. There'll be some overlap, but you'll see some things on Bing that you may not cap be captured by Google. So if you're trying to be completely thorough, it does make sense to go ahead and visit some of the other, the other search engines. Yeah. All right. Um, and yes, I did, in fact, skip ahead a little bit, but I was just worried about what was going to be on my laptop. All right. So we looked at how you can search for, you know, .edu, but uh, how else can I look for my government stuff? like .gov stuff or .edu stuff? Okay, well, there is a, um, there are a number, one of the things that makes policy-oriented research a real challenge is the sheer amount of stuff that's out there that's being produced by government agencies, uh, think tanks, and other research organizations. And specifically, um, if you're trying to do a topical search, say, on marijuana legalization, you know, where can you really go? You can try looking through this, you know, you try Googling it and you can use some of the tips that we have mentioned to get it narrower, but still there can be a lot of material to go through and then trying to verify the kind of the quality of the resource. But here are a few suggestions about places you can go, uh, some government agencies and also um, actual think tank uh, search engine I'd recommend. But let me talk a little bit about uh, the Congressional Research Service here, the first link. It's called CRS, and a lot of folks are familiar with it, but it's the research arm of um, Congress. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> I just okay. to and it basically, uh, this is a good place. And the uh, Congressional Research Service has a bunch of professional librarians and researchers who compile um, current research on top asked for by members of Congress. And just recently, they've made these publicly available. So we've talked about marijuana, uh, just type in marijuana there. Um, you can obviously see a lot of different uh, resources that were found. Um, and you can use, Ooh, nice. you can also do it by uh, obviously subtopic there. And down on the lower left right there, you can also put it by the year published. So if you just wanted to see what's come out and say the last, um, even the last three years like that, this will give you- Ooh, Highway safety, I did highway was. Highway safety. The yeah. great thing about this resource is it can have a lot of really current references there and a lot of quoted uh, current research as well. So anyhow, a good great. resource. If we go back, you know, go back to, just I'll mention in passing some other government agencies, uh, GAO G and GPO put, put out a number of different reports that are policy oriented and publicly accessible. A lot of this information is supposed to be available through the government info portal, and so that can be a good place to go to search. But um, a lot of, if you're trying to do a lot of legislative research so in terms of background, uh, one of the things that a lot of folks look for are um, resources that cover both what I would say is on the left and on the right, and also from uh, think tanks that are nonpartisan in nature. Um, the Harvard Think Tank Search, the last resource that is on the page, is actually a resource that includes over 1,200 <laughs> think tanks that's compiled by uh, the librarians at Harvard, and it could be it can be a great place to go to like if you're just if you just type in marijuana legalization here or marijuana, you'll see a lot of different um, 
reports, the think tanks that are covered here, and you'll get a sense of both kind of a conservative and a more liberal in interpretations of the same issue. So this can be uh, Yeah, I'm definitely going to want to see both sides. I mean, I'm interested in, in how both sides are seeing it. Um, I'm seeing I've got Rand and Pew and uh, different organizations here in my things. Nice. Okay. Excellent. So that, yeah. All right. So now I just have to figure out how to get this thing to go again. Um, surely there's other oh, there to present. Okay. On we go. Thank you, Matt. Very okay. helpful. Uh, but now that I have read all those things and formed my opinion about whether I think it's a good idea or a bad idea, um, now what do I do? Like, how do I reach out? How do I uh, evaluate the political implications? All of that. So, Michael, uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about the process? Sure. Uh, the legislative process, I, I think everybody has seen at some point, uh, I'm just a bill and how a bill becomes a law, you know, first committee, second committee signing. Uh, there is a crash course on the NCSL website, um, but whether it's federal or state, um, every legislature follows kind of the same linear process uh, with the possible exception of Nebraska, which, you know, doesn't have that second chamber. Right. All right. So, yeah, probably everybody uh, was now ha has some idea of how the legislative process works, but it wouldn't hurt to feel a few of the nitty gritty details if that is key to what you're doing. So we've given you um, that NCSL resource is great to uh, really dig into it. Um, but what about regulations? So regulations are the implementation of law. Legislation is big, uh, kind of far reaching. When you're talking about legalization of marijuana, all of that would be through legislation. Probably part of that legislation is creation of a regulatory agency. Um, and those regulatory agencies set rules on how this is going to be implemented and enforced. You know, where can you set up a dispensary? You know, when can you sell? How far from a school do you have to be? How old do you have to be uh, in order to buy? Those kinds of things are... So that's are kind of like where the rubber meets the road. Absolutely where the rubber meets the road. Okay. Uh, great crash course on there from the EPA talking about speed limits. You know, while the, the state may set a state speed limit, uh, each each locality and regulatory agency sets, you know, what's the speed limit right in front of your house? So that's right. not done through the state. Perfect. Okay, so that's put in a lot of work, and then here's how that process goes to. Um, so that is worth making sure that you're familiar with as well. So we just wanted to give you those two links to help in case you're not 100% solid on that. Uh, but once you know if you're interested in legislation or regulations or both, oof, there's a lot of places you can go to look up information. There, there are. So um, on the federal side, you have congress.org.gov, which is the official Congress congressional site. They have all of the bills and all of the updates. You can uh, subscribe to, to updates on congress.gov. Uh, the federal register is a daily register of of things happening in the in the agencies you can also sign up and have that email to you daily um, state websites the ncsl has a great list of of state legislatures every state legislature has you know ways to search for legislation within their state and there's a, a section of the National Association of Secretaries of State, which has links to all of the state registers, which is kind of how the, the way the public is informed of, of regulatory action at the state. Right. So as I'm trying to make up my mind, how about what, how we're, if we're going to legalize marijuana in my state, I can look at what Congress has been doing. I can look at what other states have done. I can look at if their bills passed, um, things like that, and then what regulations followed after that so that I can see like a little bit into the future what might happen in my state. 
great. And those are those are kind of like the official um, sites for those. But GovTrack.us is a nonprofit that tracks Congress. Bill Track 50. Uh, I use the pro version of Bill Track 50, but Bill Track 50 has a great free version for anybody doing legislative research. And uh, Justia is something that I use every day. A a free. It's kind of a, essentially a free Lexus Nexus. Uh, you can search the both the law and the code so the legislative side and the regulatory side uh in in any state and it goes pretty far back it's a great resource yeah perfect so then i can kind of see what the situation has been in other states and what if i then want to reach out and talk with some people about how that's gone uh to help me form my opinion or if i want to go ahead and share my opinion with the sponsors of the bill uh, so that's a, a great kind of segue. Uh, Ballotpedia has a, you know, find my legislator uh, window where you pop in an address and you find out who actually represents you. So you can reach out as a constituent uh, through Bill Track 50. You can find out who the sponsors of the bill are. And obviously as a mayor or if you're involved in industry in any way, you know, you might want to reach out to sponsors and co-sponsors and talk about how that legislation is going to impact you. Uh, as mayor, you have a little more political influence. You have a little broader constituency. And so you might want to go that route. Glad I made myself mayor. Uh, <laughs> uh, obviously, as mayor, there's political implications to that. Uh, you know, supporting or, or opposing marijuana legislation uh, will have political consequences to that follow the money has a, a a great tool to tell you where people are supporting uh politicians so you can see where money is flowing on different issues always key all right and then we've compiled for you guys a list of federal executive so this is once the bill is passed out of the legislature obviously it's got to go get signed by either the president or uh the governor right yes uh whitehouse.gov obviously has a way to contact the white house switchboard the national governors association has links to all of the governor's uh offices as well as different key staff within the governor's office so it's a, a great resource okay and then once it's a law and they've signed it now we're moving on to the regulations uh section of the of the process so that's where the federal agencies and secretaries of state come in right correct and, and the library of congress has a a great link to all of the uh to contact information at all of the federal agencies uh, the national association of secretaries of state again has a great link to the registries and and the secretary of state is kind of the usually the keeper of the state regulatory code um, and they often have links to the different state agencies within those registries right okay and so then also those agencies um might be a nice thing to limit my searches by going back to what Matt was just talking about uh, so that I can see like what all the possibilities are and then I can start limiting my searches to see what they've published. Uh, all right and then um, now it's a law regulations are in place. I want to know how it's gone for states. That might yes, be worth that, that that last piece is kind of the enforcement piece. Now, on the federal level, that's the Department of Justice, the Attorney General's office. Um, they would be the enforcer of federal law. The National Association of Attorneys General, uh, one of the best uh, association abbreviations, NAG, uh, they are gonna be the uh, enforcers of, of state law. Um, yeah. And are, are they willing to talk about how it's been going? Like, can you reach out to these people? It, absolutely. Um, they'll have, NAG will have contact information for all of the state's attorneys general. Um, and they're definitely willing to talk to, you know, obviously both political uh, people who have more skin in the game, but, but general constituents. Um, and they're, 
the the attorneys general are very involved down the line. They'll often um, have opinions during the legislation legislative cycle, the regulatory cycle, and then obviously in the enforcement cycle. Anybody who does ask for an AG's opinion, uh, that's automatically public record, and they do have to they do have to respond, and and it is public record somewhere in the you know vast world of data of. You know, <laughs> Right, which we've just it's not always easy to find, but it is a public record. Very nice. All right, so um, then on to political considerations, um, kind of what's going on on the politics side. So we've just compiled kind of our favorites from the three of us. Um, I really enjoy the NCSL newsletter. I subscribe to that. Um, I think that's got some great stuff in it. Uh, I feel like uh, Ballotpedia has some great newsletters as well, um, and I like to look at those. They've got some different topics that you can follow. Uh, so those are some of my favorites. Uh, Matt, what are some of your favorite places to go just for, you know, keeping up with political news and how topics are progressing? Well, I, I tend to be a little bit of a news junkie myself, so, um, and I go back to a little bit of the pre-internet days, so I have a fun <laughs> for uh, the digital uh, version of uh, the Washington Post, New York Times, and the Wall Street Journal to kind of get a mix of what's going on. Yeah, uh, yep. Headlines, uh, lead stories each morning. Good stuff. And uh, Michael, what are what are your favorites? So I probably read all of these every day. I was sad to learn about a week ago that Governing Magazine is going to close its doors. So I think that's a big blow to to state and local reporting. I don't know exactly what that's going to look like in the future. Um, I'm a big fan of Route 50. That's probably the newest on this list, but they do a great job of state and local reporting. Yeah, yeah. And it's, you know, any local local reporting is uh, trickier and trickier, but it's, it's nice when you can find it. Uh, and then finally, we thought we'd give you a good list of social media resources. So, uh, C-SPAN has a good list of members of Congress on their Twitter list, and then Tweet Congress is a website that just tries to keep track of all of that. So those are places you can go if you want to do social media. Uh, look into that for Congress. All right, so that is the end of our presentation. Hopefully you found some good tips and tricks and a few resources that you're going to want to check out. Uh, and as promised, here is our contact info. So please feel free to write to any one of us. You got hopefully a feel for what we're good at. Um, and which one of us you'll want to contact. And we are perfectly happy to take questions, help brainstorm about topics, or address anything else that came to mind while we were working. So I've got the question panel open, or the chat panel. Feel free to uh, let us know what you'd like us to, to talk about. Um, Matt, is there anything I forgot to ask you? Uh. I don't think so. I think we covered pretty much everything that we were going to talk about. There's a lot, of all these topics, there's a lot that's out there. We could talk for, you know, uh, I could talk a couple hours about research resources. I'm sure Michael could talk about <laughs> a couple hours about legislative resources that are out there and um, so forth. But Yeah, don't get Michael started on the politics. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, was there anything I missed that you wanted to make sure to make a point of? Um, no, but I, I know this is geared towards researchers. I just want to give one more plug to the free resource of Bill Track 50. Uh, you, know, you just have to sign up for a free account. Uh, and it's a great resource for uh, state and federal research. Um, you know, it's, it's something that I use every single day. So we do try. So I appreciate that shout out. All right, everybody, it looks like we don't have any questions, so hopefully this was useful. And again, we're going to send you this entire presentation, so you will have all of these links and you can explore some of these resources and then keep them handy next time you've got a research project. So thanks very much for coming, and uh, thank you, gentlemen. You're welcome. Thank you, Karen. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay,